Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the Free Legal Advice Show on British Muslim TV. My name is Rifat Hussain and I am your host for the next hour. The Free Legal Advice Show for our regular viewers uh, uh, who uh, I will be aware, excuse me, I lost my words then, um, is designed to assist you in putting your legal questions forward and receiving an answer from the comfort of your home. For those who are not familiar with the programme, um, this is an opportunity for you to send through any questions you may have relating to English law um, in a variety of fields such as family law, immigration, criminal law and receiving an answer. You can participate in the programme in two ways. Firstly, by ringing in live and speaking to me um, directly and putting your question. Um, alternatively, if you wish to remain anonymous or you don't have the facility to ring in live, then please uh, forward your question through our WhatsApp group and the number again you will find at the bottom of your screen. As always, thank you um, for our viewers who have already sent through their questions and I will move on to, to those questions now. Please, if you feel that I have misunderstood your question or that I've not answered it as fully as you would like, then feel free to either call in and speak to me live on air or send through a follow-up question and I will finish addressing your query for you. Now, the, the first question we have is, is rather a lengthy question and I will just read this out. It relates to an immigration law matter. Um, the questioner asks, um, I have a question about my mother's indefinite leave to remain application. She applied more than one year ago, one month before her refugee visa expired. It's been 15 months and no decision yet made for her application. She by mistake applied for um, a Pakistani passport from the um, embassy, from the Pakistani embassy. Someone helped her um, to apply for this Pakistani passport um, and she was intending to go for Hajj um, using it. This might have confused the Home Office as to why she had a Pakistani passport um, while she was a refugee in the United Kingdom. Th they set out the circumstances of the protection application. Um, th th this lady is, is fearing extremists um, in, in Pakistan as she belongs to a minority religious group. Um, the family have approached their local MP um, who has made inquiries with the Home Office and the Home Office have replied by saying that they are dealing with the indefinite leave to remain application. However, there are currently some complications. Um, the, the questioner um, suspects that this is related to her possessing a Pakistani passport um, and um, asks what they should do next, whether they should forward some further information to the Home Office um, or whether they should simply wait. So thank you for that question. As I say, quite a broad question which I, I will address um, to begin with. So th the complication may or may not be the Pakistani passport. Uh, generally, it is the case that if an individual who is seeking protection from their country of origin um, acquires a, a passport of, of that nationality or travels to that country, then the Home Office may seek to revoke their protection application. However, it's not that straightforward to revoke um, a refugee uh, a, a, a refugee status because essentially they could then be left in a vulnerable position where they, they do face danger. And um, the Home Office would need to consult the UNHCR um, in, in regards to this and further representations would be invited as to why um, refugee status should or should not be revoked. So if that was the thinking of the Home Office, then they, they would have made contact, they would have stated their intention um, to, uh, in, in respect of uh, revocation of the depo uh, the um, revocation of the refugee status. And the fact that they haven't done so um, should be a sign that maybe that is not that. Maybe there are other issues that the Home Office are seeking to look into. So it could be a whole host of things and it's probably safer not to speculate at this point. Um, are you able to forward more information? Again, um, probably best not to. 
simply because you would be doing on a speculative basis. Is it this? Is it that? Is it something entirely different? So what evidence is it that you would forward to them to satisfy that the requirements are met? Having said that, it is highly unusual for an application of this nature to be outstanding for such a lengthy period of time. Is it generally um, the case that there, there is a delay? Um, because there are delays within the Home Office. So it could be that there is just a delay and the application has been held up within the pile of other files that the Home Office has. Um, usually the Home Office do send quite a generic letter saying due to the complex nature of your application, there may be further delays um, and, and, and so forth. So I would say wait a little bit longer. If you are legally represented, ask your legal representative to follow that up. You may want to um, put in a, a formal complaint. There is a complaint uh, process that you can follow for the Home Office that again usually generates um, some kind of response and a more specific response rather than a generic due to the complexity of your application. We will get through this at some point. Um, I hope that helps and, and helps you get the response that you, you need. Um, if I haven't addressed your inquiry fully, if there's anything else, then please feel free to get in touch. I understand that we do have a brother on the line to speak to us directly. Um, Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Yes, brother. Yes, uh, madam. Uh, my name is Mahmoud and I'm calling from London. And uh, I got a question. Uh, uh, I applied for the asylum, but they didn't give me the asylum in 2012. I got the letter from the Home Office that says we're going to consider your case in legacy scheme. But they sent me the letter in 2012 that says we're going to grant you leave to remain. Mm -hmm. They gave me leave to remain in 2015, three years. And I complete in 18, 2018. And when I apply for my extension, I, I, I ask for the indefinite leave to remain. And I asked them to consider my time between 2012 to 2015. Mm -hmm. They grant me indefinite leave to remain. But now my question is whether I can apply for the nationality. Or I need to complete 10 years and where I am staying. I just want to know whether I can apply for the nationality, please. So what, what was your status, brother, between 2004 and 2015? Uh, between 2004, uh, I applied for the asylum in uh, 2006. Okay. And I was continue reporting, but they did not grant my asylum. But they says we're going to grant uh, you leave in legacy scheme. In 2012, they give me the letter. They said we're going to go grant you leave to remain. But they did not grant me leave to remain until 2015. Mm -hmm. 2015, they give me three year leave. And 2018, when I apply for the further uh, extension, and I asked them to grant me indefinite leave to remain, consider my three year between 2012 and 2015. And they grant me indefinite leave to remain. And I got the indefinite uh, now almost three years. So whether I can apply for the nationality or I need to complete 10 years? Um, you, um, it will depend on the, the background. So you applied in 2006 and then you were reporting, is that right? So you were on temporary admission? Well, well, they did not apply for the asylum. They did not grant my asylum, but I was continue reporting. Yes. Yeah, so, so when, sorry, the, the question is, so when you applied for asylum in 2006, you were required to report to the Home Office. So they granted you what we call temporary admission. Is, is that right? That's right. And so uh, up until the point that you were actually granted then in 2015, um, you continue to abide by those conditions? Yes. Okay, and then they, they did grant you the um, did the leave to remain initially and then the indefinite leave to remain? They granted me indefinite leave to remain in 2020. Yes. So that was your indefinite leave to remain in 2020? Yes, madam. Okay, sorry, because I thought you said it was 2018. Forgive me, I, I must have misheard you. Uh, I applied for 2018, but uh, my application was pending in the Home Office two years during this coronavirus. And mm. They grant me in October 2020, and it's almost been one year now. Okay. So there is a requirement with naturalization, which is what you would be seeking, that you meet the suitability requirements. 
and the suitability requirements look at whether or not you have breached any of the immigration rules. Um, you, you claimed asylum late, so you didn't claim as soon as you entered. It was some two years after you entered the UK, and therefore that may be taken against you. Um, also, um, that there was a period where you uh, were not, you weren't granted official status. You were still granted the the temporary admission. Um, in respect of your um, a question as to whether or not you should apply for naturalisation you probably need to seek some uh, more specific advice with somebody looking at the particular circumstances of your case. You probably will be safer waiting um, for the 10 years because you weren't granted the asylum. And that's usually where the exception lies in terms of the suitability, when particularly where you've breached immigration requirements in the past. Um, so I, my, my advice would be the safer bet for you would be to wait until you've achieved the 10 years and then make your application. However, if you do want to apply now, then you, you, you do meet the requirements. You've got the five years residence. You do have the indefinite leave to remain. It's whether or not the Home Office assessed you to meet the suitability criteria, which in my view, you may be falling short of simply because of, of the way that you've entered and the delay in claiming and then the manner in which you've been granted. Does that answer your question, brother? I think Brother has, has gone. Um, I hope, Brother Mahmoud, that that uh, answered your question. So, as I say, my advice is, if you can wait to the 10 years, that would be the safer route, because the Home Office may, in your case, argue that you do not meet the suitability requirements. There was a delay of two years claiming asylum, and also you weren't granted protection in the United Kingdom. You were actually afforded um, leave to remain under the legacy programme. Um, so um, that, that's the advice. And as I say, I hope that does answer your question. If it doesn't, then please do get back in touch with me. Um, I do have um, some other questions which I will move on to. So I have a question that doesn't re relate specifically to we are going to a short break. So I will continue that after the break. Please do join me on the other side. I'll look forward to seeing you then. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to the Free Legal Advice Show on British Muslim TV. I am Rifat Hussain and I am your host for this segment of the show. Um, so in terms of the uh, the question I have, it's, it's from a brother who's overseas. Um, this brother is um, seeking to come to the United Kingdom. So my understanding is that he is currently a uh, lawyer in his, his country of origin. And he's wondering how he can then come and practice um, law in the United Kingdom. Um, the, the framework of um, uh, uh, qualifying in the United Kingdom has changed recently with the, um, the, the Law Society and the Solicitors Regulation Authority um, it, it, introducing um, new routes to, to qualification. So the traditional route of taking um, qualifying a law degree and then um, a legal practice course or the, the, the bar training um, have now been um, dissolved and, and there are new um, exams in place known as the solicitors qualifying exams. With the qualifying exams, um, there is no requirement that an individual has a law degree. Um, any uh, degree can be used um, in order to access the solicitor's training. So it broadens up the, f the, the field to those who have not come through the traditional law degree route. It is true, however, that um, international students holding an LLB can no longer use that as a qualifying degree. There are lots of new courses. Um, there's the, um, the, the diplomas in law, for example. There's also the LLM that people can sit that are geared specifically now towards acquiring the SQM. Um, and, and that will enable um, people to enter into that route. <clears throat> Just before we went to break, I was answering a question in relation to qualifying as a solicitor in the United Kingdom. Before I return to that question, uh, I believe we have a caller on the line, so I will take that call first. Um, hello, Assalamu Alaikum. Hello, Assalamu Alaikum. Alaikum Assalam. Uh, 
Sister, I have a question. Uh, nearly uh, a month ago, uh, I have applied for Zimbrano case with my children for EU settlement scheme. And I asked them, uh, I have two British ch- uh, children and uh, two of them are on 10 years family route. And I ha- me and my missus as well, I request them for my documents back, just my passport and my BRP. I need to show it on my interview with college, but they they didn't send me. Now I have a job interview on 10th of uh, next month. And they said it, uh, we will look at. I just want to know why they are reluctant to not to mm-hmm. sending me by, back my documents. If you can answer me, please. Thank you for your question, brother, and I, and, I, and I will try and answer that for you. Um, why the Home Office is reluctant to send your documents back, I'm, I'm, I wouldn't be able to answer. I, I, I don't work for the Home Office and I, I don't, um, unfortunately, know how they operate. There shouldn't be a reluctance. It may just be the case that they don't have the staff in the office to locate your documents and return them to you in a timely manner. So I don't think it's they don't want to give them back. I think it may just be that they have practical barriers um, to to returning those documents. What you may want to do is, I don't know if you tried this already, but to contact the EU Resolution Centre and speak to somebody directly on the phone um, to ask um, them why there is a delay and to maybe explain to them that you um, are in need of these documents and it is hampering your ability to to study and and to gain employment, um, because without those documents, you're not able to to do that. So that that's probably what I would advise to do. If you're finding that there is still a delay or you're not getting the response, then I mentioned um, to a question earlier that you can also access the Home Office complaints process. And I generally find that once you put the online complaint through, it's a form that you fill in, um, that there is an email address attached to that. you do generally get a response um, by way of whatever it is that you're you're seeking happening. Um, So you might find that you could put that in and that your documents suddenly um, are returned back to you. Um, Just be careful, though, because with certain applications, if you do request your documents back, the Home Office may also withdraw your application at the same time. Um, So just make it clear that you're not seeking to have your application withdrawn, but you are simply wanting um, either a copy of your documents um, attested by the Home Office or the documents if that does not lead to your application being withdrawn. And I hope that that answers your question. Um, And thank you for taking the time this evening to to ring through with that. I hope you do get a speedy resolution and and the best of luck with your job interview on the 10th. Um, Coming back to the question that I was dealing with um, prior to the break um, with regards to the SQM, um, sorry, the SQE qualification route. Um, So the SQE, um, that if you are an international um, lawyer, if you are a lawyer already practicing overseas, you may find that you can apply for certain exemptions um, from the um, exam route. Um, So the best way to do that is to contact the Solicitor's Regulation Authority with details of your current practice, um, providing evidence of your current practice. um, And you may find that the SQE, um, certainly the level one requirement, there are two stages um, to qualification. The SQE one, which my understanding is um, that a core subjects um, uh, exam and then an SQE2, which is more kind of practical skills. Um, so it may be that you don't have to sit the knowledge-based exams if you are already a practicing lawyer in your own jurisdiction, but you would need to apply for an exemption from the Solicitor's Regulation Authority. Best way to do that is go on to the Solicitor's Regulation Authority website. There is a wealth of information on there about this route. Um, you also need two years qualifying experience. Again, you you may find that if you've already been practicing, you can satisfy that or um, seek a reduction in the length of time that you need to show further experience before you um, are permitted to um, uh, apply to practice in the United Kingdom. 
as I say, there are study routes. If you rather take the study route, then there are a lot of the law schools <clears throat> and universities are now offering specific programs, be that the LLM in legal practice, be that the GDL, um, that you can pursue uh, to in order to come into the UK and then acquire those skills um, to sit the, the exams. And as I say, because the LLB is not a requirement, um, any degree, um, as long as it's the equivalent of a United Kingdom degree, should be acceptable for that. I hope that does answer your question. Um, if it doesn't, please feel free to send through some further information um, or, or even contact the, um, the, the Solicitors Regulation Authority. They are usually quite helpful. There are email addresses on there and they will provide the relevant guidance um, for you um, and, and your specific circumstances. <clears throat> Moving on to um, a, another question that we have. Um, so, Assalamu alaikum. My son applied for a spouse visa. Biometrics were done four months ago, but no decision as yet. Tried to contact through phone. They said, if your time is not over, please don't contact us before. Uh, they give you options. Phone always gets disconnected. I wanted to ask at the current time, what is the time limit for decision? Is there any other way we can contact them or what else can we do? And they confirmed that they have received the biometrics um, that after they did not, sorry, after that they did not contact us. I hope you are able to um, help. So with regards to the um, processing times for settlement applications or, or spouse applications as this one is, you don't mention which country it is and it can vary from country to country. But generally the Home Office says up to 12 weeks. There are some uh, delays at the moment and some applications are taking significantly longer. We're finding generally between four to six months it, it is quite routine depending on the, the difficulties in that particular country at the time. <clears throat> um, you, you mentioned that you are contacting them and they say if your time is not up. Well, if it, if it is a standard time of 12 weeks, then your time is up because you have been waiting for four months. It might be worth, therefore, uh, ringing through. It is an expensive line to ring, um, unfortunately. But that's the best way that you can seek that information. And that is unfortunately the only way you can seek that information from the Home Office. Um, but it's not unusual, as I say, um, by any stretch of the imagination at the moment, that there are delays. Applications are taking longer. And that the Home Office and, and the entry clearance points do not communicate whilst the application is ongoing. The only time they will contact uh, your son or, or your daughter-in-law is if they want further information or if they want to conduct an interview. Um, a, 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 aside of those scenarios, the Home Office or the Entry Clearance Point will continue to process the application and will only really ever speak to you um, once the decision is then made. I would suggest maybe give it a little bit longer. Um, if you haven't heard, say in another six weeks, then contact the, the relevant lines and seek an update. Um, and, and good luck with that. Um, we have uh, another question. Um, your programme is very informative. I have a question about extension, um, if you can reply in Urdu. Um, I did apply late. My visa was finished 17th of February and I apply in March. Um, I believe you are clarifying whether or not I can answer your question in Urdu before you actually send the question through because there doesn't seem to be a question attached there. Inshallah, if you do want to send your question through, I will endeavour to answer that in Urdu and also translate that into English for those who don't understand. So please feel free to, to send that through um, and, and I, will, I will address that for you, Inshallah. Um, so thank you so much for everybody that's participating in the, in the programme um, so far. Um, for anybody that sat there watching, thinking I do have a question, please pick up the phone and speak to me live in the studio. I will answer your question to the best of my ability. If you feel that that's too much and you don't really want to come on air, then please send your question through WhatsApp. The number again is at the bottom of your screen. As long as you explain 
in as much detail as you are able to what the issue is and what your question is, inshallah, I will get the answer to you and I will work my way through those questions as, as quickly as I'm able to. Inshallah, we are proceeding to a break. Please continue to watch and I will continue to answer your questions on the other side of this break. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to the Free Legal Advice Show um, on British Muslim TV. Thank you so much for everybody that has participated in the show so far. Um, I was continuing to answer your questions before we took that short break um, and I will continue to do so now. I do have a question from a brother, um, again overseas, an immigration related question. And the brother asks in respect of a potential family life application to join his daughter in the United Kingdom. I understand the situation is that the brother um, married, um, I understand some 11 years ago now. Um, the marriage broke down with his British uh, wife returning to the United Kingdom um, and they then had a, a daughter from that relationship. Um, the brother tells us that he has not had any contact with his daughter, um, who by my calculations will now be approximately 10 or 11 years old. Um, and he um, asks whether he can apply for contact with his child and whether he can make an application under the immigration rules to join her in the United Kingdom. My understanding is that both parents of this child have now um, entered um, um, new relationships and have their separate lives um, that, 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 that they lead, the brother in Pakistan and the, the sister here in the United Kingdom. So with regards to, to your query, brother, um, in respect of a family life application, um, a, a, an application that shows that you are in a relationship um, with a British child, the, the relationship has to be more than just a biological relationship. You have to demonstrate more than the fact that you are the biological father of this child. Certainly, um, I, I, as you ask if there are any orders um, or legal proceedings to have access to your child, then the, the courts will be tasked to look at the welfare um, of, of your daughter. That meaning that the um, courts will want to see what's in the best interest for your daughter. The court will be very interested in trying to understand, well, why have you not had any contact for at least a decade and the first decade of your daughter's life? And if you have not had that contact and your daughter doesn't know you, will she want um, any contact with you? And at that age, the court will seek um, the input from your daughter as to whether or not she wants that relationship with you. Um, so it, it, it depends on the outcome of those proceedings. You are able to, to seek legal advice. Um, the better option probably would be is to speak to your former wife to see if um, she would agree to you having contact with your child and whether in fact your child does want contact with you. That's the simplest way to um, have some kind of agreement, which again is, is in the best interest of your daughter because it gets rid of any animosity between you and your former partner and she's not then dragged through um, the court system and a system where um, potentially parents are then arguing over who sees her and who does not. Um, and, and that can never be a comfortable position for a child to, to be put through. So the advice would be is to maybe have a conversation with your former wife to see if some kind of agreement can be made. If an agreement cannot uh, be made between yourselves, then you may want to seek legal advice about um, options of applying th for a contact order through um, the courts, the, the English courts, because that your, your daughter is based in the UK. Just be mindful of the fact that the court has a wide range of powers and, and contact can come in different forms. The court might agree 
that you are perfectly entitled to have contact with your daughter, but the court might also suggest that that contact can be through what we call modern means of technology. You can have, for instance, contact through um, WhatsApp or you know Microsoft Teams or Skype or any such modern um, tools that you can use to have the video link so that both you and your daughter can see you to build up that relationship. You obviously have the traditional communications of telephones. Um, and again, the court may suggest that, that that's something that you may adopt in order to build up that relationship. And so it, it could be that you, you can apply for contact. It may be that the court decides that that contact needs to be limited, certainly for the initial period, um, before you're able to establish that your daughter does in fact want to continue that contact. Um, and so an, an immigration application to then come and join your daughter in the UK would potentially be a long way off. Um, and, and both the Home Office and the courts, as I've suggested earlier, would probably question your intentions of wanting contact with your child um, so, so late. Um, and, and, and then to follow that up with an immigration application um, would again suggest that your intention is not to have the contact with your, your daughter, but to find a means of coming to the United Kingdom. So that there are potential uh, pitfalls for you. In, in trying to seek such a, a route. And then particularly if you have a, a court order against you where the judge doesn't believe that your intentions are honourable, will certainly um, damage any potential future applications that you may seek to, to make. So the advice would be tread with caution. Um, certainly the courts need to be your point of last call. You know, you do have other options and, and I would suggest that you explore those first, certainly by trying to have conversations with, with your former wife um, to see if that's something that, that can work for you. Um, but as I say, it, it may be a difficult one because you can't demonstrate that you do actually have a family life relationship uh, with your daughter, just a biological relationship, and that's not sufficient to support um, an immigration application to the United Kingdom. I hope that answers your question and gives you some um, guidance as to how to, to move forward with that inquiry. But thank you so much for taking the time to put that question forward um, and um, to, for, for engaging with the programme. Thank you. So moving on to um, some further questions that we have. Um, and before I do move on, if you are thinking of sending through a question, please do so either by ringing the studio or by sending that through to WhatsApp and I will get round to that this evening for you. Um, the sister sent a question, well, I assumed it was a sister, um, sent through a question earlier asking for an answer in Urdu. Um, unfortunately, I haven't received any further information from this sister. Um, but the, the question was, I made a late application um, my extension application should have been made in um, on the 17th of February 2021 and I applied in March um, so I would um, assume the question is what impact is the, the late application uh, going to have on, on the outcome. Um, you, you may find that there are delays um, in, in the processing, indeed there will be delays in the processing because the situation is somewhat more complex you have become an overstayer um, and the, uh, hopefully the application that you have made, you've put in an explanation for why um, there was the initial delay and why you were prevented from making the application in a timely manner. Um, that will all be taken into consideration. And if you haven't already put that information through, then I would suggest that you do with strong representations, supported by any evidence that you have, um, as, as that will assist the Home Office in establishing the full circumstances around the delay of your application. But please do, as I say, send me some further information through what was your initial application, why was there the delay, and what is your question? Is that the one that I, I just answered? Or did you have another, uh, another question in mind, uh, and, and I've just made one up for you? Um, so I, I hope that assists, and, and, and again, thank you for taking the time 
to, to put that through. And thank you very much for saying that the uh, programme is informative. I'm, I'm pleased that you, you find it so. Um, so moving on to um, a, another question. Um, so in respect of um, a, another question that we have, and, and it's, it's one that we are seeing again quite common um, or commonly occurring, so a question we have from a brother who um, asks whether or not he can apply for British passports for himself um, and for his family. And the brother's question is this. So the brother currently has limited leave to remain, um, as, as do his family members. My understanding this is based on a private life in the United Kingdom. So they have been here for a sufficient period of time either themselves or, or the children um, to, to warrant the Home Office in granting them a period of limited leave. Um, the questioner says that they are on a 10-year route to, to settlement. Um, and the, the question is that they have been advised by a friend to apply for, so that they're, they're, they're not, they've not yet completed the, the route to settlement, they are part way through, and they've been advised by a friend to apply for British passports for the whole family on the basis that, they, um, that they've been here for a, a, a long period of time, majority of which has been spent here unlawfully. Um, and and they don't, they're not British, they don't qualify for, for British citizenship. The brother says that his friend applied in, in the identical circumstances and his children have been granted a British passport. And this is quite concerning because it may be that the friend has been granted and if they, they are the circumstances, then those passports have been issued wrongly, i.e. by mistake. And at some point, the authorities will realise that those passports have been issued by mistake. And that may be soon, it may not be soon, it may be sometime um, down the line. And if, if that's the case, if the error is realised in, in five years or in ten years, it puts the children in a very, very dangerous and precarious situation because if their passports are taken away, there is no basis for them to stay because you haven't made any applications. You can suddenly find that your children are left here by that time, maybe a lot older, um, maybe even adults, without any form of status and therefore required to leave the United Kingdom. So please tread carefully um, and, and, and try and seek proper legal advice. I will go to another break and I will come back on the other side with some more questions and answers for you. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to the Free Legal Advice Show on British Muslim TV. This is the final segment of the show for this evening, so please do send any questions you have through so that I can address them before we do finish for tonight. Um, I do have another couple of questions, one very similar to the one I was just answering before the break. Um, I'm on a 10-year route, five years have already passed, any chance I can apply for indefinite leave to remain because my wife is a British citizen and my daughter is as well. Um, thank you for that question, brother. And the short answer is um, I do not know because it will depend on the particular circumstances of your case. Unfortunately, that's insufficient information for me to um, give you um, a, a definitive answer. Certainly, you can't apply for indefinite leave to remain simply because your wife is British and that your daughter is British, I'd, I'd imagine that that's the reason why you're on the 10-year route to settlement, so you've acquired the right to remain in the United Kingdom because you do have the British child and, and the British spouse in, in the UK. Um, so you would need to complete the 10-year route. 
However, there are circumstances, other circumstances, in which individuals can apply for um, indefinite leave to remain sooner than the the ten year route that they may be on at that time. So, for example, depending on what leave you may have had prior to being granted the the private life route that you're on currently, you may find that you may have already completed the ten year law, uh, you, or you may have completed ten years lawful residence which is a way of applying for indefinite leave to remain. So there would be, um, or there would be a need even, for um, a, a fuller examination of your circumstances and certainly your immigration history to see whether or not you qualify for indefinite leave to remain. But if you were um, illegally in the United Kingdom without any form of status prior to being granted leave um, on, on this 10-year route to settlement, then the short answer is no, you would need to complete the 10 years before you can apply for indefinite leave to remain. That just having a British child or a British spouse does not entitle you to indefinite leave um, without completing the, the, the route that you're on currently. So I hope that does give you some fruit for thought and some guidance as to what you may want to do, but certainly have your um, immigration history reviewed, there may be options for you if there was past immigration applications and leave prior to you entering this route. We have another question. Um, assalamu alaikum. Um, alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. My mother is 89 years old. She is from Pakistan and staying with me since 2014. She has been refused twice for indefinite leave to remain visa. Can you guide us to apply for her visa, please? So it, that, that there um, are routes um, for a, an application of this nature. Um, clearly, your mother is um, at an elderly age, um, but it would depend on the circumstances you find yourself in. Age in itself is not a determinative factor when looking at such applications. What the Home Office will consider is that the needs. You may have a, a very healthy um, 89 year old without any particular needs but simply a desire to be surrounded by her family. You may on the other hand have an 89 year old who has care needs and, and medical needs um, and so it's those circumstances that would need to be presented to the um, Home Office and I, I had a similar question I believe last week in the show. Um, what the Home Office are looking at is what are the needs of the individual um, applicant. So what are your mother's needs? Does she need care um, for her personal um, daily tasks? Um, or, or can she look after herself? If she needs personal care, then you would need to demonstrate that that personal care is not available in Pakistan. So she doesn't have other family members, for instance. Um, or even if she doesn't have other family members, you can't pay somebody else to come and provide that care. So you would need to look at things like, are there nursing agencies? Are there even individuals who are not necessarily nurses or qualified in that way, who you're able to financially uh, reward for providing the, the necessary care, cooking, cleaning, uh, personal care? in your mother's home in Pakistan whilst you provide the financial support from the United Kingdom. So these are the requirements that the, the Home Office wants um, to be satisfied before leave is granted. Um, the, the, the starting point would really be to look at the reasons given for the refusals in the last two applications and to maybe build the evidence from there. If the Home Office are not satisfied, for instance, that, the, uh, that your mother has these care needs, then provide medical evidence or whatever other evidence to demonstrate that she does. Um, you know, you would need extensive evidence to show that, that these needs can't be met in, in, in Pakistan. I suppose your difficulty as well is that generally these applications are not accepted from inside the UK. The fact that your mother has been here since 2014 um, again, is, is, is difficult because it may suggest that she's, she's here as an overstayer. Um, and and that, that is essentially the problem that the Home Office tried to remedy when it brought in the, this stricter criteria. 
um, of, of care for elderly relatives. For those of us who have been around um, for, for a, a number of years in this field, will remember the, the, that the Home Office actually had a concession, um, which was age uh, restricted. So if you had a parent who was 60 or 65, and I forget which limit it was, whether they were healthy or otherwise, if they were in the UK, um, that the Home Office would then not require them to, to leave the United Kingdom. Unfortunately, there was a lot of abuse of that route with a lot of elderly parents coming um, for visits um, and then never returning, um, relying on this concession. And so the Home Office therefore curtailed um, and that kind of concession, got rid of it and made the, the criteria extremely strict. Um, and, and so very few of these applications now succeed uh, as a result. So there is a very, very um, strict requirement for lots of evidence to demonstrate that the um, care cannot be provided in the country of origin. Um, so you, you would need to do extensive research and provide the clinical evidence, um, both in respect of what the needs are, but also in terms of why that's not available in, in Pakistan through you paying for it. Um, I hope that that addresses your, your question. If it doesn't, then feel free to send me some follow-up questions and inshallah I will try to address those. But good luck with, with trying to get that resolved um, because it's certainly not something that your mum wants to be dealing with at, at this stage in her life. And so I do hope that you do um, get some resolution um, quickly through that. Um, so brothers and sisters, thank you so much for sending those questions through and for, for taking the time this evening to participate. Um, in the show, whether by sending questions or by simply uh, viewing the show um, and joining us for another uh, legal advice show. Um, there are still a number of questions coming through and I am really sorry if I haven't managed to get through your question. Um, inshallah, do keep them coming through and anything that I've not managed to get through this evening, I will address next week. As always, um, I'm live um, on Mondays um, starting from 7 p.m. UK time. So feel free to tune in and in the meantime, send through any questions as well. Um, as always, any questions that you are sending through, they must relate to English law. I don't practice in any other jurisdiction and therefore wouldn't be able to help you. And also make sure that you provide sufficient detail. Um, you know, in, in terms of dates, any kind of history to your question. And I know that can be quite difficult when you're trying to limit your um, question to a WhatsApp message. Um, but feel free to send through a couple of questions if, if you do need to. It just allows me to break the question down, to understand it more fully and to give you a more thorough answer um, so that you are properly guided with regards to your query. Even better, pick up the phone and speak to me. There was a question earlier this evening about whether or not I can answer a question in Urdu. I certainly can do. And if you feel that language is the barrier that's preventing you from joining in, please don't. Ring in. I will address your question in Urdu and I will translate it for those brothers and sisters um, who want that in English. Um, so that hopefully that, that clarifies. Again, um, areas of law, we do get a lot of questions with regards to UK immigration law. If you have any other questions in relation to family law, criminal law, employment law, whatever it relates to, please feel free to send that through. Um, it may be that I don't have the answer immediately for you, but I certainly will find the answer and come back to you or direct you um, to a location where you will receive the sufficient guidance um, or the relevant guidance even and a sufficient response to, to your question. So this question relates to um, delays in biometric cards uh, being delivered at the moment. And again, it is a, a problem that we're aware of. Um, the, 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 I, I'm not sure what the issue is, but we are aware that there, there are delays from the Home Office once the people have been granted leave to remain um, in the uh, biometric card being delivered. Um, please do bear with um, the, the, the processes that need to be followed and don't panic. It's not unusual, unfortunately. So where you would expect to receive your card within seven to 10 working days, you may find that it's taking that little bit longer. 
um, if you are concerned contact your solicitor and they can chase that up um, with with the home office but as i say usually if you are legally represented then your solicitor will have already done that they will have diarized the date that they're expecting to receive your biometric card and if it hasn't arrived they will have contacted the relevant teams i think a lot of the problems within the uk home office are arising because of the the, the short uh, short shortage of staff um, and with still a lot of staff working from home so that there are then delays with when things get processed and, and how quickly um, there have been um, issues around um, postal services as well so it could be a combination of things but as long as you have the confirmation that your leave has been granted then your card will arrive um, but just um, keep on top of that and any concerns keep in contact with your legal representative or seek advice from your local MP who will be able to chase that up for you. That now brings us towards the end of this programme and I finish by thanking you all again for participating in the show. I will be returning on Monday um, at 7pm uh, as always. Please join me then and um, I will continue to answer your questions and guide you. Thank you so much for joining me this evening. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.